So to create the bay, we're going to go up to the network strings pull down. And from there, we're going to click on the knuckle tool. Again, it's important that we review what's happening in the command line. It says select knuckle to edit or enter if creating a new knuckle alignment. So this alignment is going to be brand new. So we're going to press enter. This is the knuckle definition form. We're going to provide a name. Once you've provided the name, you need to select an adjacent road string. So you can either go and choose existing road crown from the list, or if you weren't too sure, you could always click on the little picker tool and pick on the alignment. So we're going to choose existing road crown. The match code, and this is where the hover graphics and help text will assist us visualizing what we're being asked. The match code applies to where the time point in for this particular bay will be. Now we've drawn our polyline and the subsequent alignment over the top of the EB code. So the EB code will stay there. Underneath we've got the alignment geometry. So there are different types of knuckle shapes that we can create. These do not have to be created on a straight section of row string. You can use the knuckle tool to create widenings, for example, at the corner or the bend of a road if you wanted to. Because we've already created an alignment, we're going to use the Use Alignment option. And from the pull down, we're going to choose the following alignment called Parking Bay. This form is split up in similar fashion to the cul-de-sac form. So you need the alignment to be created first, and then you can create the string on top. We're going to click on the Create Update Alignment button. Visually, you won't see a lot happen on screen. This is because the alignment was actually created by us. So by clicking on Create Update Alignment, we're simply telling the software to register that it needs to be using our alignment called Parking Bay. Where we have a select template, we're going to go and choose our template. And from the bottom of the list, you should see Parking Bay. Underneath, we have section spacing. Now, ordinarily, one meter could be a perfectly fine value. However, we have some very small radius values up here. And a section spacing of one meter might not pick up the detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that value 0.2. Underneath, we have three widening options. So we're going to hover over each to describe what each one will do. So the first one is the most typical. This one will keep the edge of bitumen code in its current location, as you can see here. And a new code will be created called LNUC or RNUC, depending on what side of the road you are. The reason why we don't have another EB code is because that would mean we would have two LEB codes and the software would not allow us to have two codes of the same name on the same side of the template. So we create this brand new dummy code. The next option, move the match code, is very similar to what would happen if you were using a design variation. So simply the edge of bitumen would be draped onto the edge of the car park at its current slope of minus 3%. And then you have the option of none, which is independently designing the knuckle without any connection to the road. We're going to be using the top option, which is the most commonly used for this particular tool. Underneath, we can ask the software to calculate the elevations or the vertical design of our parking bay using the road string. So you can see from the hover graphic there that it's going to simply project whatever the elevation is up at the same slope as the road. And at the moment, that's being reversed. So we've got a minus 3% slope to the edge of our bitumen. And then it's going to project a positive 3% to the edge of the parking bay. Now, in combination with that, we have a few tools underneath. First of all, reverse slope. So reverse slope will determine whether or not that slope should be reversed to a positive three or whether or not you'd like to maintain that minus three. And we're going to look at how that operates in a minute. The cells to the left allow us to determine the extent of automation. And this was what we did with the cul-de-sac tool. So every point two, the software will automate these elevations for us for 10 meters from the start and 10 meters to the end. Okay, and you can put large values in here if you want the whole thing to be automated. Where this automation does not exist, so we'll have 10 meters of automation to at the start and then 10 at the end, there'll be a gap in the middle. Now, what we can ask the software to do is to connect those remaining levels with fitted curves if we want, or it'll simply just draw a straight grade between them. We're going to click on Create Update String. 
and when we do that you'll see that the drawing has updated and the model has also automatically updated. Let's have a quick look at the reverse slope option. So uncheck reverse slope, click on create update string and you'll see that updates to continue the minus 3%. We're going to leave it with the reverse slope and then click on create update string. Now we're going to have a quick look at the vertical design. So click on show VGE on close down the bottom of the form and then click close.